It's pretty amazing with the family of companies who have brought together here and what we can do in three days, we yeah. can build this half million dollar room that people who routinely put together seven digit rooms yeah. and they can actually be impressed. So that's, uh, as uh, Anthony Grimani likes to say, it's like we went cooking and we're still <laughs> able to perform a, go a gourmet meal. Sure. Uh, with our limited tools. So yeah, it's styrofoam walls, uh, but uh, we actually delivered, I think, a very imp a, a cohesive, impressive uh, audio video experience and seating experience as well. But, um, and it, it takes a very, it takes a lot of thought, a lot of planning to actually sure. pull that off. Hey guys, we are here at Cedia 2023. We are wrapping up, Chris. This is the last day. You guys have put on a phenomenal demonstration room, Dolby Atmos, big screen, beautiful image. We're gonna talk about everything that Seymour Screen Excellence brings to the table for home theater. So for sound, we have an, our processing front end, we'll start at the beginning. Yep. Well, at the very beginning would be the source, which would be the Kaleidoscape sure. provided by them. But then that feeds into Mad VR for video processing. And we'll go up the video chain maybe later, I should have started there, but we'll go into the Storm Audios mm -hmm. or electronic processing. Yeah. And they're bringing with them a new form of direct as well that they've not shown at Cedia before. So we're actually able to demonstrate. Yeah. Uh, Matthew could even sometimes turn on and off and they could just notice the difference between uh, active room treatment and, and sure. standard calibrations. And it's impressive. Yeah. It, turn, it turns things from, from maybe a lo more localizable base to a more environmental base and it just it locks a cohesiveness and just widens the sweet spot and it's fantastic. It's, it, even, in a, even in a little cardboard box that we're in, sure. it's obvious. I had a great conversation with Anthony. We talked all about the acoustics in the room. We talked all about the speakers and then even went back to the rack. We talked about yep. um, everything, the new technology that you're utilizing in this room. This room is spectacular. It yep. really, really is. So I'm sure he talked an hour or so it, uh, on that's, his part of the deal. But. That's why we're separating this into two <laughs> videos now because he's got a ton of content for and sure. And so I'll just uh, do as the Italians do. It was It was. It was incredible, to be honest right. with you. Anthony would understand that. It was a, it was, it was it was a, a great discussion. It was discussion. perfect. I mean, I feel like we could turn it down to a two channel and put on some vinyl and impress the audiophiles. Sure. It just it had an a, 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 a organicness to it, and yeah. it was just lovely. Yeah. So we got great sound in here, but I would love to spend some time yeah. talking about the picture, the image, because we didn't really dive into that. We dealt more with the audio side of it. So kind of share with my audience, what do we have going on in this room with Seymour, with the projection, size of screen, and let's go from there. And not to leave audio behind yet, but sure, we brought yeah. this acoustically transparent screen. It's 13 and a half feet wide, 162 uh, inches wide. It's a native 16.9. And it's actually a four-way masking screen, so we can demonstrate some capabilities there. Um, but one of the important things, especially with our audio fans, is do no harm to the audio. Yeah. And so for Anthony's uh, innovations and Storm's innovations, we don't want to mess that up. We sure. don't want to be bringing in high frequency roll offs or comb filtering that is going to affect their performance. It needs to be neutral, do no harm. So uh, we brought a screen. This is the lighter Neo material. It's about a one and a half dB and it's quite flat. It turns actually into more of a pressure gradient and you'll notice that then uh, level calibrations can do most of the lifting. Mm -hmm. um, we still had, uh, we had Anthony Grimani doing some tuning. We still had Matthew Trinklin doing tuning. Um, so we, we brought the horsepower, but the first step, I think they would agree, is do no harm in the sure. beginning. And yeah. so it makes nice. it a lot easier for the electronic correction at the end right. to do its magic. Sure. But just like with acoustics, you got to start with a you got to start with a good basis. Yeah. So I hope hope we presented well, at yeah. least from an audio perspective. Sure. Um, but yeah, going up the video chain, we again back with the source. So mm -hmm. Kaleidoscape was our server, right? Uh, which can deliver larger files than you would even get on your 4K discs. Correct. Um, and so it's the it's the best source, feeding it through a Mad VR. Now, what is the Mad VR processor doing for us? And we're using it for tone mapping. We're also using it to help lock the frames because we're going clip to clip to clip, and so sure. we're changing color yep. tables, uh, frame rates, uh, SDR, HDR. Right. This handshaking can become annoying, but what the Mad VR can do is, is it can handle that and minimize that, and so it's, it, I, I'm not sure if the feature is called frame yeah. locking, but we, sure. we let them be in control of that, right. and it helps. Um, we also uh, allow them to do uh, the tone mapping. I think yeah. I mentioned that as well, but sure. we had Barco doing calibration, we had Mad VR doing calibration, and loading the calibration tables in, in through that and taming this wild west of a beast called HDR right. 
which ironically uh, it delivers for some people a worse picture. If you don't really know what you're doing and you plug it in and maybe it's, then it's dim, um, but we hear a lot of complaints about HDR, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's it's a difficult standard. Sure. And Mad VR brought that uh, brought that into play for us. Nice. Then going all the way up into the laser powered uh, yeah. product, lasers are great. Uh, is the Barco Nord? It's their 1.78 ratio. Uh, it's a 12,500 lumen. Is their uh, gross lumens? Sure. Now we calibrate that into best picture. Right. We throttle the laser down a little bit as well because we got so much power to. To, to uh, play with, right? But it's like having a high-performance V12 engine on the highway, where sure. you know you can you can just idle this down and it's smooth. Right. Um, it, it, I've heard people say it's the best contrast that they've seen um, from that class of product, and so we're impressed that we're able to deliver that for sure. them and impress. This is SDR. This is not HDR. The point being, if you got a well film piece and it's well projected and well displayed on a really nice screen look at this look, look at the depth of the color depth of the blacks in sdr and we're in a, a, a light control room most time the audience is getting a demo in a totally dark room but right now we're we're sitting here in an interview and that thing still looks gorgeous yeah even with some lights on uh, yeah. obviously you kill the lights it would improve absolutely but, um, but, but the new art is magic it brings this power and this color volume behind it that you just you it's not available in, I guess, lesser product or something, but that's yeah. really where the money is going for, sure. is color volume, I would say. And that's not only just saturation, but it's a saturation at a luminance, and you can normally achieve that with a proper horsepower yeah. uh, uh, and lens quality that they're, they're bringing to the system. Sure. So, um, and for the video file, hopefully for the barcodes, I can do them justice by saying we're not gonna do any harm to the video. Mm -hmm. So we don't have resolution dropping holes in the screen. Because once you lose those pixels, there's nothing you can do about it. Right, they're, they're gone. gone, yeah. Yep. Now our gain on this screen is a 0.8. So okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, they say, oh, you lose 20% of the picture. <laughs> they were covered with that. That's <laughs> just a, right, that's just an amplitude <laughs> yeah. issue. So just like uh, maybe a speaker's efficiency isn't, sure. you know, the, the top. That's so correct. add more efficiency power. a little bit. Bring in more power, yeah. and uh, you can compensate for that. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, the, the barcode does that in spades. It's just an amplitude issue, and once you correct for the same amplitude, and you're matching luminance with, with uh, say a perforated product, mm -hmm. and we sell those too. Yeah. Um, you then you have same luminance, so gain really is not an issue. That's a sure. system match spec, uh, but you're maintaining your resolution. Right. So again, do no harm. Sure. And so here we have with the lighter Neo material, it's a material that I would invite anyone to go up to and they can put their nose up to the screen. Yeah. They're not gonna see weave, no holes, no texture, yeah. none, none of the features. It looks like a solid screen. Right. And if you, in a proper dark room, which you know, if you turn the lights off, right. but, I mean, this is, this is kind of bat cavey. Sure. It's classy bat cave, yeah. I would call it. Um, then uh, uh, you know, once you do that, and it's appropriate for a white screen, Sure. then this is why our material is used in, in reference and yeah. content mastering and, and, and creating situations. And so. with the masking, if you've got a, say for instance, a scope screen, this is four-way masking, right? Correct, yeah. So we so can we actually can. mask that in if you got 16 by nine. And what I found over the years is masking just doesn't add, like take care of the gray bars. I thought mentally, oh, I can deal with the gray bars, that's no problem. You showed us something really cool, even at M-Wave the first year, and once you added the masking, it was like a light bulb went off in my brain, like, holy cow, there's something magical. Can you maybe explain yeah. what happens when we add we masking? Had, we had at M-Wave, um, and it's such a unique show, you can experience uh, so many different um, technologies and compare them, and you can't do that anywhere. But at M-Wave, we had two identical screens, and we had a projector shoot out of about 15 projectors yeah. or so, yeah. about that. Um, and on the left, we had a $5,000 projector, and on the right, we had a $26,000 projector. And in the room, folks were like, okay, yeah, I get it, I see, yeah, you know, I boom, see it's, better. It's, it punches. Yep. Um, but the screen on the left, I had motorized masking, and I hit the button, and it closed in, and then people are like, oh, it's not something you've seen before. And it's not just don't look at the gray bars anymore, make them black, yeah. but it actually frames the image, gives your eye a contrast uh, floor to start with, sure. which is then much deeper. Yeah. And then people actually started preferring the, uh, it had a little bit more color saturation. Sure. I mean, the calibrated to be yeah, the same, but sure. they're going to do different things. Right. But people actually said, I'd take the $5,000 yeah. projector. Yeah. And masking improves any projector you put in there, even, sure. you know, even a barco. Right. Um, and so with this screen, we could do 
Uh, we can do uh, top bottom masking, of course, if we wanted to go to the higher aspect ratios, 2.4, for example. Sure. Um, or we could even bring masking in from the side okay. if we wanted to go to, say, a 1.33. Right. Now, this screen here is a native 16.9, mm -hmm. because we just wanted to match the panel. We didn't sure. want to mess with lens memories or anything right. complicated here at the show, because uh, you know, we, we have enough complication as exactly. it is. Exactly. You got four days to try to make this thing happen. Yeah. Murphy's having a field day with us. <laughs> believe me. I mean, even the iPad locked yeah. up. Like everything that can. Absolutely. Wreck will. Yeah. Um, but if we had started with something in the middle, say a 2.0, mm -hmm. 2.07. Sure. That's approximately 2.07 exactly in the middle of that 16.9 yeah. to 2.4 ratio. And that would be called a, a constant area screen. So that's where if it's, you know, it's Avengers 1, Avengers 2. You don't care what it is. Right. You don't care what shape it is. Yeah. The screen's going to change to right. accommodate that. Yeah. And one camp always says, well, mine's larger. And the other camp says, mine's larger. Well, the constant area guys, that's the apex predator. They mm -hmm. don't care anymore. Right. It's, Doesn't matter. It's what the director chose. And they're not going to cry when uh, something goes uh, sure. to a different ratio. With this screen, you can not even cry if, uh, with a Zack Snyder's Justice League in 1.33 because we bring it into that. Right. And you can go full height. So you so. can accommodate any size, any aspect yeah. ratio. And even on the size. So this is, how big is this again? So this would be 162 wide. Okay. Um, diagonal, I guess, native would be maybe 183, okay. 185. So if somebody even wanted to go bigger, maybe yeah. how big? Because I've got some guys that we featured here on the channel, man. They've got 20-foot screens. They've got bigger screens. Can they even go larger with this material yeah. here? So this is my top, my largest masking platform called the Adjustable Ratio Theater, and mm -hmm. it is going into theaters yeah. um, and large wow. mastering studios and screening rooms. We can do 20 feet tall seamless. And so if you do 20 feet tall and we can go out to maybe a 276 ratio on, sure. on side mass, I mean, you can get up oh to like gosh. 500, 550 inches Holy wide. Uh, we're doing that in four-way screens yeah. in the three to 400 inch range sure. even now. But our capabilities, um, it's a scalable product. And we've got some, uh, we've got some tricks in how we can even keep you know, all the borders laser flat, yeah. even scaling however far we want. That's phenomenal, man. So. You're you're making a killer product, but you've got lots of products too, and so that's that's what's interesting. Whether you got a big screen, a little screen, sixteen by nine, two point three five, whatever. If you want to weave, now you got perforation. We do kind of a little bit for kind of breaks my heart, but we do we do it. But you know that there's <laughs> sometimes there's an application for, for sure, that. and there are folks that have the aspects of the image that they think are their priority. Sure. And I get it. Like, it's like no one speaker is going to be perfect for everyone. 100%. So um, we've got to bring a different flavor uh, for those folks as well. Um, but this largest size platform can, I mean, it's, it's, it's unlimited in the applications that we talk to. You get a factory guy in the box, um, it's usually me, yeah. um, on the installation. We have a mid-tier product that then for the more normal range of say, let's sure. say you know, 10 feet to 20 feet okay, range. Right, yeah. Um, something we could put in your room for yeah. as a for example, sure. just a random. Yeah. I've yeah. got a 12 foot wide screen. There you go. Yep. Just random, picking it out of the air. Yeah. Um, and that's called a true aspect masking screen. We had one of those out there and we actually put a four way into that and it's in a four inch bezel. Yeah. So, I mean, a four way screen and a four inch bezel, like sure. that's phenomenal. Yeah. That's tight. Um, and uh, then our most economical masking, uh, motorized masking, called the trim. Yeah. And that's a two way. Uh, you can do top bottom okay. or so side side. One or the other. One or the other. Okay. But we do have a little trick we were showing out there as well. And we showed, we debuted this at M Wave yeah. where we can actually sneak some magnetic masking panels on there. Yeah. And kind of make it, I mean, I call it a hodgepodge right. four way, but so it's. So you got a, motorized and then manual. Yeah. Yep. But it's technically, a, I can do a four way screen sure. for like 10% of the cost yeah. of, a, of a real uh, yeah. motorized one. So. That's phenomenal. Anyway, options. I like to cover all the bases sure. because. Honestly, there's not much overlap from the, you get the do-it-yourself or the enthusiast that wants to spend an aggressive, sure. really small number, sure. yeah. a good budget, right. uh, versus the more cost no objects, and we're in those rooms as well, but sure. there's not a lot of overlap. It's just you're bringing different levels of capability um, to those. So I want to, uh, I love them all. Well, Chris, it's been a pleasure. It's been amazing, Cedia. This is the second Thank year you. I've been at Cedia. You guys bring it big here at Cedia. So if you ever have a chance to come, definitely come. But guess what? Cedia, for the most part, is open to only integrators and people in the business. So you don't have an opportunity to come see this cool place. But guess what? We've got you guys coming again at M-Wave. Hopefully, I'm putting yep. them on the spot. Yeah, so that's right. I know we're moving the date up a little bit earlier, and Evan's like, oh, man, that, that's going to be a little difficult. But hopefully, we can make it happen. 
but that would be an opportunity for you to experience because y'all brought a bunch of screens at M-Wave this year and even the original year. So yeah. love to have you join us and all that information on the website. I'll have Chris's information, Seymour Screen Excellence down in the description. You can reach out to them if you need a theater screen, whether it's little, big, masking, even retro masking. We've talked about that on the channel before. Even if you don't have a Seymour screen and you want to add some masking, they've got a solution yeah. for that as well. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We've got more videos from Cedia 2023. You can check out the playlist right here. As always, hope you guys have an incredible week. God bless, we'll catch you in the next video.